Oh, welcome. I'm actually Robin, not Robert, so <laughs> minor details, but yeah, welcome everybody. Um, we are so thrilled to have you in beautiful, wintry Montreal. It's a beautiful city, so thank you for hosting us, um, all the folks who are local. Um, and before I get started, uh, first I wanted to thank all of our sponsors here today, um, in particular our diamond sponsor, Google. Thank you, Google. Um, and our platinum sponsor, uh, Microsoft Azure. So uh, thank you to all our sponsors today. Um, and just I want to give a, a few brief housekeeping notes before we get started. Um, if you don't know or if you haven't seen yet, the sponsor showcase is on the fifth floor in room 511. So this is where you'll have all your coffee breaks and lunch, and there's also plenty of working space if you want to catch up on email or have some meetings with folks you meet on the floor. Uh, Wi-Fi information, um, there's a link on the schedule on the back of your badge. Um, and finally, last but not least, um, please get to know our event code of conduct. Um, and essentially, all attendees should feel really welcome here. Um, and if you have anything or you see anything, please talk to our event staff right away. So let's get started. All right. So... Um, people are really surprised to learn that over 95% of the world's websites depend on JavaScript. Um, so really, most people are using JavaScript whether they know it or not. Um, and today, JavaScript continues to hold the top ranking among all, uh, many developer surveys. So for example, the GitHub Octaverse that was just released has JavaScript um, as the most popular by repo contributions. And again, it's a top programming language in Redmonk in their language survey. So no doubt, this is an ecosystem that is undeniably large, um, but it, which really makes it sometimes difficult for emerging te technologies and new projects to really break through in a saturated market. So the challenge for us all is how do we keep JavaScript trustworthy and modern with this huge user base it truly is a humbling and an awesome responsibility. And so this is where the OpenJS Foundation plays a role. When a technology becomes like really super important um, and many people depend on it, it's often donated to a foundation. So it can be sort of cared for in a neutral home. Um, and the OpenJS Foundation's new, but we're really built on years of experience. Um, as you know, when the JS Foundation and the Node Foundation came together, um, we really took and built um, from the best of both worlds and really created this new wonderful thing. Um, and in fact, I kind of go way back with the Node Foundation. Um, I was part of the original um, open source team at Microsoft that helped create the Node Foundation um, because we knew that putting Node under a neutral foundation would really help increase its contributions and set it up for further success. Um, and as you know, Node is now 10 years old and it's everywhere. Um, including many great um, apps and companies that you know and love. Um, and one of my favorite examples is NASA. NASA uses Node and JavaScript for spacesuit solutions, and it helps keep astronauts safe, just like Jessica and Christina did last month. So I think that's pretty cool. So um, at the Node Foundation, we have over 30 uh, of the most um, important open source JavaScript projects. Um, that are really uh, critical to the web and beyond, including Appium, Dojo, jQuery, Node, and Webpack. Um, and our projects um, are in the top 100 JavaScript libraries that provide a variety of solutions um, and include many of the frameworks and dev tools for a modern web. And if you don't know, you may, not, you may think you don't need jQuery, but really it's still widely used today. Um, and our really, um, our members make it happen. They provide the financial support and the, a lot of the governance leadership that really um, drives our organization forward. So thanks, if, um, if any of you are in here, raise your hand if you're a member. And uh, if you ever have questions, find these folks. They're really uh, an essential part of our organization. Great. So we've had a great uh, year since March when we were formed, and we've welcomed some really awesome incubation projects to the organization. Um, now, the incubation project is when a, a project is going, is, uh, joins the foundation. They kind of go through an onboarding checklist before they join. 
So um, Node Version Manager, NVM, was our first project we welcomed. And if you know, why, NVM is a widely used method to install Node.js and manage multiple versions. Um, and recently, Google um, brought AMP to the foundation. Now, AMP is used in 30 million domains and billions of pages. And what it does is it helps uh, websites um, have pages that load more quickly. And it's implemented in Google and in Bing and Pinterest and Pantheon. So that was pretty exciting. And recently, Fastify came to the foundation. And Fastify um, is partially sponsored by Nearform, so we thank them. Um, and Fastify is one of, the, uh, uh, one of the great developer experiences that helps provide uh, a great experience with low overhead. So that was pretty cool. And fa if you don't know, Fastify is used in Car2Go and Vectra and many other um, apps, so that's pretty cool. But today, we have some more exciting news. Today, we're welcoming, welcoming a new incubation project. So I am thrilled today to announce that the open source web framework Electron has joined the foundation. Yes. Woo. Awesome. So I, it sounds like you all know Electron. That's pretty awesome. It, Electron really is an easy way to build cross-platform desktop apps. And wow, is it widely used. We're talking Skype. Visual Studio Code, Slack, Twitch, WhatsApp, and more. Um, and Electron was developed initially by GitHub in 2013, but um, as you all know, it's um, really maintained by several people across many organizations today, so that's pretty exciting. Um, the last year, they've moved to more of an open governance model that I talked earlier, and I'll talk more about sort of that neutral um, decision-making process. And um, we're just excited and honored that they've really um, kind of put the trust in the foundation to move this project forward. Um, and I, today, I really want to especially thank um, some of the project leads, Jacob Groundwater and John Kleinschmidt from Microsoft, and Felix Reisberg at Slack. So thanks, thanks all. It's been uh, really great. And tomorrow, you'll get to hear more from John and Felix in their keynotes and breakout sessions. So great news today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the foundation on how we kind of create that neutral uh, space to kind of nurture these technologies. Um, we've created um, kind of some policies and process that really prioritize stability and openness. Um, all of our conversations, as much as possible, are held in the open. You're all welcome to join. We publish our calendar. It's on YouTube if you want to catch up on what we've been doing. Um, and we really encourage decision making at all levels. Um, and you'll also see a lot of our members uh, working actively in the standard space, ECMA and the W3C and more. So that's really important as well. And since we became an umbrella organization, one of our big goals was to really create a governance process that gave a strong voice to our projects. We have a great board that sets our vision. We have a cross-project council that guides some of the technical governance. Um, and we have an amazing staff that supports our projects with marketing and legal and program management and all these events around the world that bring people together. But truly, we want to like, create um, a place where each project can operate independently, but the foundation is really removing that friction so you can grow and uh, make your project more su successful. Um, another important part of what we've been doing is uh, our certification program. And this is something that had been in demand by the community for the last couple of years. We had a lot of feedback from GitHub on how to shape that. Um, and we're really fortunate to work with NodeSource and Nearform to help craft that. And Adrian and Dave are going to talk a little bit more um, about the certification program um, later today. Um, but really think it's really a great way to showcase your abilities with Node if that, and allow um, companies to find top talent in the market. So, you know, I'm new here. I'm kind of on my third month. But in a way, it sort of was like stepping into an extended family, much like, you know, if you work a lot in the open source community. Um, but people, since I left Microsoft, still like to say, Robin, wasn't it hard working on open source at Microsoft 10 years ago? Um, and the answer is, eh, a little, but mostly no. I mean, the community has always been so welcoming. Um, but really, truly, I learned so many lessons from the people I met on the way. Um, wonderful words of wisdom. And one of my favorite was from Jean Pally, who was my boss at the time. And he would always tell us, um, 
team, one plus one equals three. And that's when the value of being together is better than being apart. So that really, you know, is sort of shaping how I think about how we work at the OpenJS uh, Foundation. Um, so at MS Open Tech, one plus one equals three meant engineering, marketing, policy. We all had a seat at the table to ensure a project success. You need everybody at the table. Um, it also means working with your competitors and partners to really help the customers that everybody shares. Um, so for me, that really sort of is the spirit of how the Node Foundation, the JS Foundation came together um, to, you know, to really sort of strengthen, improve um, how we serve the JavaScript community. So I covered a lot today, um, but did I answer the challenge question? Well, no, probably not entirely, because you know, we don't have all of the answers. Um, however, the foundation really has um, a solid uh, footing and a start and a, a lot of amazing people to carry the JavaScript ecosystem forward and, and carry it in the future. And actually, Miles is going to talk a little bit soon about the future of JavaScript. Um, so this week, I challenge all of you to dig in on some of these issues that I've just covered. Uh, collaborate, learn from each other, um, and remember that one plus one equals three. Um, and really, truly invite you to help shape the future of JavaScript. Um, the rewards you make will be things that you discover about yourself, like I did in my journey with open source, um, and the, the wisdom that you share with your uh, new friends in the JavaScript community. One last announcement before I close and introduce Miles. Uh, we are um, announcing our date for our 2020 conference. Um, not quite sure the name yet, but it's going to be the Global Conference for OpenJS Foundation. It's June in Austin, so that'll be super cool. We are going to co-locate, co but be an independent event at the Open Source Summit North America. So save the date in June, and we hope to see you there, and we'll have more information on our website in the next month. Thank you. Oh, thank you.